Well, good afternoon and welcome everybody who's watching us live streamed and uh, welcome those new councillors uh, into the chamber for the first time. It's a very exciting day for us all, this being the very first council meeting of a new and elected council. Um, I welcome back Councillor Sharon Griffiths. I also welcome back uh, Councillor Lisa Interman. And I welcome in our new councillors for this term, uh, Councillor Lauren Edwards, Councillor Nick Lipperback, Councillor Daniel Maltman, Councillor Adam Roberts, and Councillor Rachel Shepherd, and also Councillor Josh Slade. Extra special day for Councillor Slade, this being his birthday. Happy birthday to you, Councillor Slade. Um, and today's extraordinary meeting will be recorded while it is being live streamed to YouTube and will also be made available on Council's website in the coming days. And the view you should see today during the live stream to the YouTube will show the minutes of the meeting being recorded during the meeting with the current speaker appearing on the screen. As this recording will be available as a public record, those in attendance, including councillors, staff members of the public um, and members of the public, of which we have none uh, because of COVID uh, restraints, should refrain from making any defamatory statements. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, today we are gathered on the traditional custodians of this land. We're meeting on the Birupai people. I extend my uh, respect to Elders past, present and those emerging and extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders with us here in Chamber. Now, uh, we do have councillors, Madam CEO, attending. If you could just let me know those councillors attending by remote. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Edwards, Lipovac and Shepherd. Thank you very much. So could I have someone please move and second that councillor accede to the request of Council Lord Lipovac, uh, Edwards and also Shepherd. Thank you uh, for attending the meeting by remote. Thank you, Councillor Adams and seconded by uh, Councillor Slade. All those in favour? See none against, I'll declare that carried. We'll move on to the local government prayer and due again to COVID constraints, I'm terribly sorry, there will be no prayer uh, this morning. We'll move on to apologies. Uh, Madam CEO, no uh, apologies. Madam Mayor, no apologies. That's the way. Um, and item number four, disclosures of interest. Councillors, do we have any disclosures? Thank you, Councillor Mortman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I have a uh, declaration of a non-pecuniary less than significant interest and may participate in consideration and voting for the reason that I am a non-financial life member of Revive Lake Caddy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mortman. Any other disclosures, councillors? Uh, yes, Councillor Interman. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a, uh, a non-pecuniary uh, non less than significant interest to declare in item 10.01, proposed closure Port Pacific Drive, for the reason that I am the only city councillor who was present at the 2017 meeting, the subject of the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Interman. Uh, I too have a disclosure to make. It is of pecuniary interest for item number 10.02 EOI-21-5 Flood Recovery Works Civil Construction. Uh, it is pecuniary interest as I've said uh, as I do have an interest in a company owned by my husband who is in civil construction. The registered name of that company is Stable Corp. Thank you, councillors. Um, we'll now move on to uh, item 501, which is a mayoral minute. Um, I'll so move the recommendation with a slight amendment as follows. The Council 1 undertake an urgent review of the Lake Caddy opening strategy triggers to reduce the high level opening trigger from 1.6 metres to 1.4 metres to mitigate flood impacts on council infrastructure and include as a high priority consideration of poor water quality and public health. Two, receive in the February 2022 Ordinary Council meeting a draft revised Lake Caddy opening strategy for consideration. Three, upon the lake reaching the 1.4 metre trigger level, request that the Chief Executive Officer effect a traditional opening of the lake on the first and most appropriate tide in accordance with the revised opening strategy. Four, continue to pursue the option to dredge the lake for recreational purposes and for beach nourishment 
Five, urgently seek the appropriate approvals to affect a traditional opening of the lake if closed and all water quality has been determined to be a risk to public health and marine life. In preparation to the start of the December 2022 holidays and then annually, Six, request the Chief Executive Officer to host a meeting of the key government agencies and officers involved in the management of the Lake Cadi system and councillors to discuss the future management of the lake. Seven, request the Chief Executive Officer to provide a monthly update report to Council on the progress of items above. And finally, eight, note that any opening of the lake is dependent on Council first obtaining relevant approvals and meeting legislative requirements. Uh, I'll just briefly speak to this. Um, this has been a long drawn out process, not just in the previous term of Council, but Council's prior to that. Um, our community has made it clear how they feel about the lake. Um, our tourists have made it clear how they feel about the lake. I think it's incumbent of uh, this new council moving forward uh, into our future to ensure that we're managing the lake, uh, to uphold the health of the lake, the marine life within it, the environment surrounding it, but also the enjoyment of it. And uh, I'm very excited that we have a council uh, here committed to doing that. Hence the reason this has been brought into the extraordinary Ordinary meeting. Um, this uh, today will demonstrate to our community that we are uh, serious about this management of the lake and are also committed to doing so. So thank you very much councillors. Uh, if anyone wishes to speak in opposition I'm happy to hear it. I, I have some questions um, Mayor Pinson um, just in regards to this to help you inform um, Thank, you. Decision. Councillor Shepherd, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. So I, I do, I do actually have quite a, a number of questions, uh, and so I'm not sure how we best de deal with that. Um, um, ca Councillor Shepherd, if the question is directed, to, if you could say who the question is directed to. Sure. Well, for, for now, I suppose um, d directing it to you and just noting that I, I have a, a number of questions and willing to take advice from yourself or governance about how to best deal with that. Um, knowing that, the, you know, as you've noted, this is a big uh, a issue of significant community interest and certainly deserves a well-informed decision from councillors and noting that we haven't um, done induction processes yet. So I want to make sure that I'm asking all of the appropriate questions to, to make a sound decision. Sure. Well, can we start with the question with a question? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So the first question, so regarding point one um, of the motion, so can council complete the Lake Cadi opening strategy independently or uh, do other authorities need to be involved and provide approval? Okay, so that will be through our CEO. Um, Madam CEO. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, Councillor Shepherd, I'm going to refer over to um, Director Watkins to give you a response on that. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Madam CEO. It, the, um, the process that we're going through is, is to develop a revised strategy if Council endorses the recommendation. Um, it would be a draft strategy that then would be presented to Council for its endorsement to determine whether or not it wants to proceed with that. Um, and at that point, we would actually then go through a formal exhibition process because this is a, an existing strategy of the council. Um, and that would include us referring the draft to uh, relevant government stakeholders and agencies, and then also going through a public um, exhibition period with the community. So um, it does involve other authorities. The, the amending of the strategy itself is a, it's a council strategy, so it doesn't need approval from other government agencies. Um, but certainly, we'd be seeking input from those other government agencies. Okay. Thank you, Director Watkins. Um, were there other further questions? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I, I'm wondering, perhaps, if um, if asking Director Watkins to provide uh, some general background or input might be useful at this point rather than me uh, asking the range of specific questions. 
Um, Councillor Shepherd, uh, I guess there, there were links and there was a lot of information and documentation provided to all councillors before the meeting. So unless there's a specific question through the CEO to Director Watkins, I'd, um, I'd have to ask you to think on that. Um, I, I did not perceive there was a, a great deal of information provided to us, uh, and, and and certainly um, I'd be I'd be looking to inform myself with those uh, if it were. Um, so can I get a, can I get a sense of how many questions you're happy for me to ask, Mayor Pinson? Um, well, given uh, if I could just go to our. Uh, our group manager of governance, Michael Ferguson, and just ask him, um, Michael, were the the links to all the information on the lake not sent out to all councillors through the week? I don't recall, Madam Mayor. Oh, I don't recall, Madam Mayor. I remember sending a lot of information about some other items, um, but I honestly can't recall what was sent out on the lake. I apologise. Okay, thank you. Well, I'll have to review that after the meeting. Um, so, Councillor Shepherd, if I could just ask you to be succinct in um, asking any further questions of interest to help you make this um, decision that we've got before us. Sure. Um, sorry, just give me a moment then. So, um, look, I, I'd actually like to move an amendment uh, at this stage. Okay, do you have that amendment? Uh, I don't have it written down. I wasn't anticipated. I wasn't anticipating moving moving uh, an amendment. I was hoping um, to to um, ask and have answered the, the range of questions so that I could feel that I was taking the appropriate information into account uh, when making the decision. And so the amendment that I would like to move would be that uh, one, that council note the importance of this issue to a large number of members of our community. The council uh, number two, council note the complexity um, of uh, issues regarding Lake Cadi from a legislative and environmental sense. And three, um, request the CEO uh, provide a, a briefing to councillors on the relevant considerations. Um, such that we can debate this issue at the, the February Council, open council meeting. Okay, thank you, Councillor Shepherd. So, points one, two, and three. And I, uh, I would invite input from any other councillors uh, regarding how, how to strengthen that. And the intent of this is is to ensure we're engaging. Uh, thank you, you Councillor Shepherd. Thank you. Um, first, we'll, we'll ask for a mover um, to second. Oh, sorry. Yes, apologies. No, that's okay. That's fine. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Madam Mayor, I'll second for the purpose of discussion. Certainly. Thank you, Councillor Interman. Um, okay, so uh, we have an amendment. And Councillor Shepherd, if you'd like to speak to that. Yes. Uh, so, as it stands, we have... Uh, six new councillors, although I acknowledge um, Councillor Roberts has extensive previous experience, so probably five new councillors who um, are not necessarily informed to the extent required to make the decisions on what I consider to be quite a complex issue and certainly one that's of great interest to our community. So uh, I think it is very important uh, that we are adequately informed of the the relevant considerations and that that's, um, uh, I suppose that's a matter of due diligence governance wise but also you know a show of uh, respect for our community that we, uh, we are well across 
the, the appropriate issues at play uh, when we're making uh, when we're making what are of course important decisions, as as is evidenced by um, by bringing it forward. Um, in an extraordinary meeting. I also would like to note that as it stands, five councillors have not yet engaged, have not received induction activities uh, in addition to specific information in regards to the lake. And I've certainly made great efforts to inform myself personally regarding uh, the motion and amendments that have been put forward, uh, uh, but would appreciate a, a briefing from the relevant director to, to support decision making. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Councillor Interman, would you like to speak to this? No, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other councillors wishing to speak to the amendment in the positive? Uh, yep, uh, Madam Mayor, yep. Yep, thank you, Councillor uh, Edwards. Councillor Edwards, um, here, yes. Um, uh, look, look, I. I feel, um, in, you know, in a similar way to um, Councillor Shepherd on this. Although um, I've been working hard in the last couple of days to try and get across as much information as I can, uh, I do still feel uh, disadvantaged um, in being able to make a informed uh, decision on, on how to vote. Okay, thank you, Councillor Edwards. Um, I wish to speak against the amendment for the reasons being that all of us are elected are members of the community as well and we live in the region. We're all very aware of the lake, its complexities and also the, um, the views of the community in regards to the management of it um, and the improvement of the health of it as well. Um, this is this is something that over 30 years has been spoken about, uh, reported on, investigated and researched. There is uh, quite a lot of information and I speak against the amendment because um, our community is expecting action from this council moving forward and um, I'd like to see that happen today. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Griffiths. Um, yes, just quickly. Um, Bron, could you just scroll down to the top original motion, please? Um, I think really what I want to point out is that essentially it's only point one that is changing. The rest is really asking for receive information, get feedback, consult. This is really not a motion that's suggesting we're doing much more than doing some investigation. The first point is the only point that actually instigates immediate action to take that action immediately. So I'm not sure that other councillors have read, like new councillors may have misunderstood where this is going and what the information is suggesting. Um, I think also from what I heard from Director Watkins, she was strictly referring to, from what I understood, was the strategy. She was speaking of the strategy. Point one is a strategy, but is actually separate to the overall strategy that will be developed. So I think that's something that maybe the new councillors may want to give consideration to. Thank you very much, Councillor Griffiths. Uh, I'll, I'll then uh, put the amendment to the vote then. Those in favour and councillors, those who are remote, I will ask you, um, so Councillor Edwards, for or against? For the amendment. Yes. For? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Griffiths? Yes. Uh, Councillor Interman? Against. Against. Councillor Lipovac? Uh, for the amendment. Councillor Maltman? I'm against, too. Thank you, Bron. Councillor Roberts? Against, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Shepherd? For. And Councillor Slade? Against, Madam Mayor. Thank you. The amendment's been lost. We'll move back to the motion then. Yes, um, Councillor Interman. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to move a further amendment and happy for you to incorporate it into the motion. Uh, that would be a point nine that uh, the CEO be requested to expedite the catchment management program regarding Lake Kadai. Thank you, um, Councillor Interman. Uh, are you talking, uh, could I just ask a question, the, coast, the coastal management program? Yeah. 
CMP? Yes. Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. not the catchment management. Oh, sorry, catchment management program. My apologies. No, coastal. Yeah. Oh, coastal. coastal. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no, no, no. Thank you. I just the one we're in the process. Yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> I just want to make clear that yeah. uh, that's what you were meaning. Thank you, uh, Councillor Interman, and happy to take that nine in. Speak to the motion, if I may. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. This indeed has been a long, uh, long uh, standing uh, matter and controversy. And as everyone who has struggled with this knows, the problem lies with the apparent inability of council uh, to um, convey its desires and difficulties uh, to the uh, state agencies. So I absolutely support this in terms of, uh, I think it's clause six where we meet with them, uh, but regardless. Uh, but my, I, I did have some concerns right at the beginning because this is leading the community, this will tend to lead the community to believe that these things will be able to happen. However, um, and so I was originally going to oppose it. However, with your clause eight in there, which notes that this is uh, dependent on the uh, approval of the agencies or rather their discussion with the agencies and it depends on their um, uh, signing off on the results. Uh, and also thank you for including clause nine. Uh, but um, my only concern is that this does send it, send a message to the community that we can in fact do these things when we've got when we really have got to work through the agencies, but that meeting and the clause uh, eight at the bottom uh, satisfies me that we are uh, uh, in our action, uh, we're heading in the right direction, but I do hope that the community does take those um, cautionary notes on board. Thank you. Oh, uh, speaking for, yes. Uh, thank you, Councillor Interman. Yes. Councillor Griffiths. Yeah, just quickly. Um, I'm just going to speak in the positive for this because we keep saying this is all too hard, it's a bit difficult, we've got to go through other agencies, but really um, we actually are looking at our ocean bars being approved. Like That was a long hard slog for them and they've done it on their own externally and that's happening. So I think as a government organisation and as a council, I can't see why we can't take the same approach to say we are going to see this happen and we are going to get it done and as soon as possible. Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. So I'll put the motion to vote then. All those in favour? Sorry, Mayor Pinson, may, may I ask? Um, no, Councillor, no, Councillor Shepherd, um, the motion's being put to the vote. I will come and ask you what your vote is on that though. Thank you. All those in favour? So uh, Councillor Interman, Councillor Slade, Councillor Maltman, Councillor Roberts, myself, Councillor Griffiths. Um, Councillor Shepherd, in favour or against? Against. Thank you. Um, Councillor Lippervac? Uh, in favour. Thank you. And Councillor Edwards? Against. Thank you. I'll declare the motion carried. Thank you, councillors. We'll move on now to item 6.01, being the creation of the Office of Deputy Mayor. I'd like to move the following recommendation. That Council 1, create the Office of Deputy Mayor. 2, determine the term of the Office of Deputy Mayor to be the mayoral term. 3, elect the Deputy Mayor by way of open voting if more than one nomination for Deputy Mayor is received. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. I'll, uh, I'll hand that, oh, sorry, no, I won't. I'll put the motion to the vote first. All those in favour? Sorry, I, I had submitted an amendment, uh, well, sorry, Councillor Shepherd here, I had submitted amendment in regards to that for um, the point two for the term of Deputy Mayor, oh, sorry, to be the shorter term of one year. Okay, so we have an amendment. All right, thank you, Councillor Shepherd. So the same as create the Office of Deputy Mayor, but two is to set the term of the Office of Deputy Mayor to one year. 
and the same is three, elect the Deputy Mayor by way of open voting? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Do we have a seconder? Uh, yes, Councillor Lipovac. Thank you, Councillor Lipovac. Uh, Councillor Shepherd, would you like to speak to this? Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in the Deputy Mayor uh, position uh, being a, a one-year a one term because I think the one-year term uh, and then requiring that that Deputy Mayor position be voted on, upon, uh, voted on again each year, it provides uh, some accountability to you as the Mayor that it, it, indeed we're, we're demonstrating we're able to, to work with you a bit more closely than perhaps the other councillors are required to. We're also required to show some accountability to our fellow councillors, the councillor body, that uh, we are able to operate really effectively um, in that Deputy Mayor position for uh, for the whole councillor body team. and. And um, probably more importantly, that with uh, with the one year term, we have the opportunity for accountability to the community who are able to see how we go about uh, filling that term uh, and speak to whether they support support the person in that position um, next year. Okay, thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Councillor Lipovac, would you like to speak to this? Uh, no, nothing more to add there. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to the amendment? No, I'll put the amendment to the vote then. So I'll just wait until Bronwyn puts it. Oh, so Councillor Edwards, are you for the amendment or against? Uh, for. Thank you. Councillor Griffiths, for or against? against. Councillor Interman, for or against? For. Thank you. Councillor Lipovac, for or against? For. Thank you. Councillor Mortman, for or against the amendment? I'm against the amendment. Councillor Roberts, for or against? Against, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Shepherd, for or against? For. And Councillor Slade, for or against the amendment? Against, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I'll declare the amendment lost. And we will go back to uh, the original motion. Is there any further discussion on this, councillors? For or against? I hear none. I'll put the motion to the vote then. Uh, Councillor Edwards, for or against the motion? Against. Councillor Griffiths, for or against the motion? For. Councillor Interman? For. Thank you. Councillor Lipovac, for or against the motion? Uh, for. Thank you. Councillor Mortman, for or against? I am for. Councillor Roberts? For, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Shepherd, for or against the motion? For. Thank you. And Councillor Slade, for or against? For, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I'll declare the motion carried and I will now pass on to you, Madam CEO. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. So as returning officer, I'm basically in receipt of two written nominations for the position of Deputy Mayor for the mayoral term. Now, those two nominations are Councillor Rachel Shepherd, nominated by Council Nip, uh, uh, Nick Lipovic, and Councillor Lauren Edwards, and it's been accepted by Rachel Shepherd. Second nomination is Councillor Adam Rod Roberts, which has been nominated by Mayor Peter Pinson and Councillor Danielle uh, Maltman, and that's been accepted as well. Um, Councillor Shepherd and Robert, Roberts have formally accepted this through to us into the office. I now actually uh, offer an opportunity within the, the meeting to invite further nominations for the position of Deputy Mayor for this term. I remind you that nominations must be in writing and that in accordance with Section 7, 2.2 of the Local Government General Regulations 2005, two or more councillors, one of which may be a nominee, must nominate a councillor for position of deputy mayor, and the councillor must accept the nomination in writing. I now ask for the first time, are there any more nominations for the position of deputy mayor? Thank you. I now ask for a final time, are there any more nominations for the position of deputy mayor? No? Thank you. I declare nominations closed and advise that nominations have been received for the position of Deputy Mayor as follows, Councillor uh, Rachel Shepherd and Councillor Adam Rob Roberts. 
As there are no more nominations have been received, um, and we basically have those vacancies, it is necessary to determine the Deputy Mayor through an election. As there are two candidates, a vote by way of show of hands will be taken, with the candidate with the greatest number of votes being declared as Deputy Mayor. As we have people remotely, I will actually ask you uh, what your vote actually is. Um, I now request councillors who wish to vote for Councillor Rachel Shepherd to clearly uh, raise their hands or say aye uh, if you're in a remote attendance um, and that we can actually record that vote. So now for Councillor Rachel Shepherd. Aye. Councillor Interman. Who was the aye from, Councillor Edwards? Councillor Edwards, yes, thank you. Thank you. Any other ayes? Uh, yes, Councillor Lipovac. Councillor Lipovac. Thank you. And now I actually call for a show of hands and a vote through for uh, Councillor Adam Roberts. Thank you. Two, three, four, five. Councillor uh, Shepherd, can I get your vote? Yes or no? Uh, no. Yeah. Councillor Edwards? No. no. Councillor Lipovac? No. No. I declare that uh, Councillor Adam Roberts is the new Deputy Mayor, and I congratulate you um, on this uh, vote um, for this pro proceeding forward. Thank you very much. And I'll hand back to, the, to, the, to Madam Mayor, and uh, we can proceed with the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam CEO, and uh, hearty congratulations to you, uh, Mr Deputy Mayor. Roberts, uh, is there something you would like to say? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I just want to say it's an honour and a privilege to undertake this role uh, for the second time. Uh, I undertook the role in 2013-14 under a different mayor. Uh, I did take a, a break over the last five years, but I'm really excited and energised to be back supporting who I believe, in my opinion, is the best mayor that we have had in Port Macquarie Hastings Council. Uh, and I also want to publicly pledge my support to the Mayor as well. Uh, thank you for your leadership, your advice, uh, your friendship, uh, and I hope to be everything the best Deputy Mayor that you could have. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Mr Deputy Mayor. We will now move on now to item number 6.02, which is the February 2022 Ordinary Council meeting date. Do we have a mover for this, please, councillors? Thank you. And a seconder. Thank you, uh, Councillor Interman. So is there any discussion on this, councillors, that uh, we'll conduct the February ordinary meeting at 5.30 on Wednesday the 16th of February and we'll determine the times and dates of the remainder of the ordinary council meetings on the 20, sorry, for 2022 at the February 2022 ordinary council meeting? Any discussion on that? I hear none. Is there any opposition? I hear none. I'll declare. Certainly, Councillor Interman. Thank you. I understand that um, uh, you've got in mind to change the uh, times of the uh, meetings uh, going forward, and so I just ask that uh, uh, we have the opportunity amongst councillors uh, for us to discuss. Uh, that proposal before it comes to the council agenda in February. Um, as we did be before, have that discussion, uh, Councillor Interman. Certainly, we will have further discussion on that before we set that, that time and date. Thank you. So I'll declare that unanimous, given that there was no opposition to it. Thank you, councillors. Um, item 6.03, could we have a mover and a seconder for the Local Government New South Wales Special Conference? being that Council 1 determined attendees for the special conference to be held between 28th February 2022 and 2nd March 2022 to determine voting delegates for the special conference to be held between 28th February 2022 and 2nd March 2022 and 3 note that the Chief Executive Officer will also attend the conference. I may um, move this myself actually um, Bronwyn with an addition uh, of three, note that the Chief Executive Officer and Mayor will attend the conference. 
Thank you. A seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Thank you. I really don't have much to say on this other than it's a great opportunity for people within local government to get together. There are a lot of um, a lot of policies that, that are, are lobbied within the state government when you attend one of these. Um, it's a good um, place for fellowship as well and uh, you tend to learn a, a few things along the way by speaking to a lot of other people who are in the same or similar roles as yourself. So um, it's a really good, um, it's a good opportunity uh, for councillors to attend this as well. So having said that, councillors speak now or hold your peace as far as those who would also like to attend with the CEO and myself. Madam Mayor, Councillor Edwards. Yes, Councillor Edwards. Um, I would like to attend. Um, a little bit hesitant um, with the current environment and hoping that it's possible to attend remotely, but even if it's not, I may consider uh, attending, um, but depending on the environment at the time. Is that acceptable? I, I think under the circumstances it is, Councillor Edwards, because uh, there could be a possibility by the end of next month that it may go remotely. So um, yes, I'm, I'm happy to accept uh, your suggestion on that. Councillor. Thank you. Um, Thanks, quick question to the appropriate, probably the CEO. Councillor um, I think in the past we may have actually not necessarily determined the attendees at the council meeting that it's been open at a later date. So in other words, instead of specifically having a set number, I think it's actually open to more than the numbers we could suggest today. In other words, you know, it could progress, it may go online and then it could be open for others to attend at the same time. So is there a limit to the number of people who can attend this conference as well? Uh, three, Madam Mayor. No, there is no limit. We've got a number of new councillors. I think it's a great opportunity mm -hmm. if people wish to I attend um, and I think we should leave it open. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you Councillor Griffiths and I, I concur as well. I think um, let's do that. Um, other councillors' uh, minds may change as we go further on and get closer to the date. So if we just uh, leave that... Yeah, if we go back to... Deter um, sorry. Note the special conference. Hang on. Note the special conference to be held between 28 February 2nd of March. Determine voting delegates for the just um, and yeah. determine voting delegates. And leave it at that. Yeah, and just leave it at that. That should be sufficient, shouldn't it? And uh, and voting delegates um, to attend. Those wishing to attend, make it known to the CEO. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Bron. So, um, note that Council note the special conference to be held between 28th February 2022 and 2nd March and uh, councillors wishing to attend after 2022 March and those councillors wishing to attend to make that known to the CEO. And make, yeah, make point three, number two. Sorry, Michael, you've got some advice. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, through you, Madam CEO. You are able to send as many people to this conference as you like, but we do have a limit of four voting delegates, and those voting delegates are traditionally determined by council at a council meeting. Uh, that way, if we end up with six people who want to actually go the council has decided who actually gets to vote at the council meeting rather than being a bit uh, ambiguous as to who is voting and representing council in that capacity. Okay, thank you, um, Michael. Might I suggest for the purposes of this that, um, that uh, we note that only four and the first four to make it known, myself being one of the four who I've committed. Oh, and Josh... Uh, Councillor Josh Slade is also committed to going and Councillor Edwards is now committed to going. So we've basically only got one, one spot available yes. off, the, off the advice of Michael. So can we just modify point two to say the first four nominating our um, voting delegates? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Are you happy with that, Michael? So the first four councillors nominating. The, the alternative, sorry, Councillor Shepherd here, um, the alternative could be to uh, determine those four delegates at the February council meeting because that will be, this, as we just determined, the 16th, I believe. Yeah. Um, sorry, counsel, Councillor um, Shepherd. Uh, actually, it'll need to be booked and paid for well before the 16th of February, so that's not possible. But um, we, we already have myself, Councillor Slade, Councillor Edwards, who've shown um, interest. Do we have one more councillor for the purposes of maybe just fulfilling, or we can only send through, or, or we'll only send through? I'm, I'm certainly interested in attending should it be um, conducted remotely, so I'd be happy for my name to be put there for the fourth uh, voting delegate. But that's only, uh, Councillor Shepherd, as Councillor Griffiths has just said, that's only if it's remote. So we're, we're looking for a, a, um, a commitment to actually attend. Excuse me, can I go back to amending the motion to say that the first four delegates who... Um, Put, present their um, what do we want to say um, their attend, intent to attend that they receive the, the voting rights they, are the, they become the voting delegates can we just go back to the original point please and just get this finished so if councillor griffiths if you'd like to make the amendment uh, change the the motion and i'd be happy the voting delegates determined that the first four councillors to report to the ceo will become the voting delegates for council. Okay, and I'm happy to take that in to the motion. And obviously you are too, because you're the seconder. Yes. <laughs> okay, councillors. Is there any opposition to this? Now that we've all had time to read it, I hear no opposition. So I'll put it to the vote for the last time. No opposition, councillors? Hear none, I'll declare the motion carried then. Thank you very much. We'll move on to item number 6.04, which is the count back election. Thank you, you Councillor Interman. Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. Um, Councillor Interman. You nearly did it. I nearly did it. I'm trying very hard not to. I know, I know. Um, uh, this is a most sensible uh, move forward uh, which allows that if there are any uh, resignations from council, we certainly don't want those, but nevertheless should a resignation happen uh, that um, uh, the Electoral Commission be advised now that that would happen if there were uh, resignations within the first 18 months, uh, which means that uh, we obviate the need for a new election and uh, it's simply counted back and the next candidate who would have been elected uh, if the resigning councillor had not stood, uh, then they will automatically be elected. It's a big cost saving to the community uh, and uh, and also to uh, council, I would say, for organising uh, any of their involvement in organising the election. So I commend this to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Interman. Councillor Griffiths, do you wish to speak to this? No. Do we have any other councillor that wishes to speak to it? I hear none. I'll put the motion to the vote then. Councillor Edwards. Madam Mayor Four. Thank you. Councillor Griffiths. Councillor Interman. Four. Councillor Lipovac. Four. Councillor Mortman. Four. I'm four. Um, Mr Deputy. Four, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Shepherd. Four. And Councillor Slade. Four. Thank you. Determine that carried. Thank you, councillors. Moving on to item number 9.01, Mr Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move a motion that I've pre-prepared earlier, please. Just wait while that's brought to the screen for everybody's attention. Thank you. Just 
just double checking that's the one I'm after. So this is the motion that I'd like to put, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And I'd like to second it, Mr Deputy. Uh, Madam Mayor, would you like me to read the motion? I would like you to read the motion. Thank you. That Council discontinue any investigations, planning and funding for new roads and vehicular links within the shown orbital road corridor that significantly and unreasonably affects homes, businesses, clubs and landowners within the corridor area as well as the wider visual amenity. To remove the term orbital road, orbital road corridor and any reference to similar on any and all infrastructure related planning documentation of council being developed now and in the future and make reference to its specific exclusion from future infrastructure planning activities. And three, continue to prioritise individual road upgrades, duplications and links across the Port Macquarie Hastings local government area, including any existing and new links, but excluding those discontinued as a result of point one above. That will work towards mitigating traffic congestion issues as part of the broader Port Macquarie Hastings Regional Integrated Transport Strategy and Integrated Strategic Network Master Plan and that will also inform an updated urban growth management strategy and consider criteria and values identified by the Port Macquarie Transport Network Planning Project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Deputy Mayor. Would you like to speak to this? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would. <laughs> May I note that I have um, ordered... Uh, an Councillor Shepherd. Um, if I may, and I know it's difficult because you're remote at the moment, but um, unless you're asking a question or moving an amendment, Councillor Roberts has the floor. Uh, yes, I wanted to notify you that I intended to move a an amendment, but I need to um, note that that was sent very late and there's no way you would have known that. Okay, um, thank you. And it is it is difficult. I, I note that for you at your end too, um, given that you're remote and I can't see you. So um, you do have an amendment to move, Councillor Shepherd. Uh, uh, excuse me, Madam Mayor. Has, has Councillor Robert spoken to the motion? No, he has. So he should get the right to speak to it. Thank you. First. Can I have you take your microphone off? Thank you. Um, so, rightly so, Councillor Interman, um, and if I could, Councillor Shepherd, if you could just wait until Mr Deputy Mayor speaks to this motion and then we'll take on your amendment, okay? Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so this motion is a little bit more expanded than the item that was publicly gazetted for a number of reasons. Um, what I'm trying to achieve with putting this forward with a lot more detail is to give the community confidence that uh, if supported, the council is absolutely committed to removing the orbital road mentions anywhere in its planning documentation, but it actually really values the other plans, as you can see in point three, that are already in progress or council already has on the records uh, and in planning documentation. that. Also, uh, Madam Mayor, the, the Council, if adopting this, is very much committed to dealing with the significant traffic issues, not just for the corridor that uh, we're talking about, but for the whole LGA. There are so many regional roads outside of this particular corridor that do need examination. Uh, and rather than just focus a lot of energy and attention on one particular corridor, we take a a strategic approach to the whole region's network infrastructure issues and traffic congestion. Uh, that's why I'm bringing in, um, as it seems in number three, so many different plans. But the intention there is to make sure that all of these plans talk to each other uh, and that they uh, certainly form part of the urban growth management strategy so we can deal with the traffic issues as a, as a matter of priority. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Mayor. Um, now, Councillor Shepherd, you do have the amendment. Bron, do you have that to put up? Thank you, um, Councillor Shepherd, if you'd like to read that out. 
Do I need a second dub? You, or can, a, you, can, read, you can read that, sure. Councillor right. Shepherd, and I'll ask for a second dub. Sure. So uh, the amendment is that Council will defer debate on this agenda item until the first ordinary meeting of Council after Councillors have received appropriate briefing to that the importance of this matter to the residents and businesses affected by the corridor um, it's, oh, sorry, that we note, yes, that we note the importance of this matter to the residents and businesses affected by the, um, uh, what words should I be using there? I might ask for your advice on that, Mayor Pinson, um, by the, the... By the orbital, the, the oh, right. orbital road corridor. There we go. And probably just remove the noted for this item. So that council note the complexity of this matter in terms of the likely significant strategic and financial implications for council discontinuing these investigations of the noted orbital road corridor. Uh, number four, request the CEO provide a briefing for councillors uh, as to the relevant considerations, including strategic and financial implications for council, and uh, pro and request that the CEO provide the briefing in point three within a time frame to facilitate debate in the February open council meeting. Okay, thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Do we have a seconder? Uh, yes, Councillor Lipovac. Thank you, Councillor Lipovac. Councillor Shepherd, would you like to speak to this? Yes. Um, so I certainly appreciate um, the the expanded the expanded uh, version of the notice of motion that um, Councillor Roberts has provided, and I think it, you, looking at that expanded notice of motion, and uh, well, you can notice a couple of things. Obviously, that that Councillor Roberts has quite an extensive grasp of all of those in, interconnected. Um, strategies that are at, at quite a high level um, and and very significant for the future but I think it also highlights it that uh, it, with the interconnected nature of all of those strategies and policies uh, that there that this is quite a complex issue generally it's difficult for the community to understand and certainly for for uh, even councillors uh, on a short short notice you know having having received um, the agenda two days ago, and I understand that we're required to to make decisions. This is our job, but a part of what we're required to do as well is to is to make really sound decisions for our community and, and uh, make sure that the decisions we make now don't bear uh, inappropriate costs for people of the future as well. So. My concern, my key concern at this stage is that councillors don't have the relevant uh, information required on an extremely complex issue uh, to make a sound decision and that that, uh, that could have potential unforeseen, uh, unforeseen to us um, implications for the future. And so I, I, uh, I ask that other councillors suggest that uh, uh, support support my suggestion that we defer debate so that we can make a really informed decision come February. Okay, thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Uh, Councillor Lipovac, would you like, like to speak to the amendment? Yes, I would. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, again, thank you to uh, Councillor Roberts in relation to the additional information provided today, which uh, obviously changes it a little bit in terms of what we first saw. Um, it's fair to say Port Macquarie, nothing new here, is desperate need of a road network that serves the needs of our community now and into the future. The population, as we know, growing faster than we imagined you know, 10 years ago, let alone five years ago, due to various circumstances. There's more people, more traffic, more gridlock over an extended period of time each day for those traveling east, west, or north, south, or a combination of those routes. Um, had this road been, the orbital road, been constructed two decades ago, we wouldn't be discussing this issue now. Uh, I personally don't agree with the entire path of the orbital road plan, uh, but I also don't agree that we shut down investigating, looking at other options that may include parts of that corridor. Um, we've got to do something for the benefit of the greater community. We can't just uh, sit on our hands and hope our next elected council in 2024 will have the answer. Now is the time to plan for our future infrastructure needs. Uh, part of the solution, as we know, working is the work currently being undertaken to uh, duplicate Ocean Drive, and the, the same should be done for Lake Road uh, between Ocean Drive and the Oxley Highway. Uh, we know our local member can assist with uh, developing traffic solutions for the Lake Road and Wrights Road roundabouts on the highway. 
Uh, and we also need to encourage moving heavy transport businesses out of the industrial area and into a, a new complex uh, which is being uh, proposed or has been at St Crooks. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Lipovac, if, yep. if I may stop you um, sure. there, you're, you're speaking in support of the amendment that has been put up which is about briefing for councillors and um, st strategic financial implications. So um, whilst we understand all of those things, can I have you just focus on what the amendment actually is and speak to that? I guess I was speaking more against the initial uh, motion that was put up prior to the uh, detailed. Yeah, that's, a, that's okay. And I, I, I understand that um, this is our first meeting. So if mm -hmm. I can just coach you, Councillor Lipovac, sure. and, and just um, suggest that we're dealing with the amendment at the moment, and that's what you're supporting by seconding it. So that's where I need you to stay, is with your, your um, support for this amendment and speak to that. Well, I guess uh, in summary, I, I support uh, what uh, Councillor Shepherd has put forward uh, in relation to that amendment, and I'll leave it at that. Great. Thank you, Councillor Lipovac. Um, so, uh, do we have anyone speaking in opposition to the amendment? No, I'll put the amendment to... Support. Sorry? Support. We've had Councillor Shepherd and Councillor Lipovac speak in support of it. Councillor Interman, yes, so I'm going to put it to the vote now. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, I re request to speak. Uh, um, we've had two... We've had two... There is no rule that, that says that's the way it goes. Well, um, this is... I'm chairing this meeting, um, Councillor Interman, and I'm going to put the motion to the vote then. So all those in favour of the amendment... Thanks, Bob. Councillor Edwards for or against the amendment? Madam Mayor, for. Thank you. Councillor Griffiths? Yes. Councillor Interman? For. Thank you. Councillor Lipovac? For. Thank you. Councillor Maltman? Against, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I'm against. Councillor, oh, sorry, Mr Deputy Mayor now. Roberts? Against, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Shepherd? For. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Slade? Against, Madam Thank you. The amendment's been lost. We'll move back to the motion. Thank you very much. And um, being a seconder, I, I would like to speak to this. Um, we have a very outdated uh, uh, strategy that's been on the table for the previous term that I was mayor. And uh, what I realised was that this, uh, this corridor was really a furphy for our community. It was never going to address the constraints we have as far as our traffic congestion is concerned. And I say that um, with confidence because we're talking in uh, yesterday's dollars of one billion and by the time we were ever able to reach um, financing it, it would far surpass far surpass um, $1 billion. Uh, we would also need revocation of a nature reserve through the Minister. Uh, that would be extremely difficult to, uh, to get. Um, and especially given that there are um, some endangered species along that route as well. For four years, uh, my um, uh, support had been behind the community. It's no surprise that I continue to support removing this um, off the table once and for all. We need to right a wrong that was done. There was uh, four Christmases that uh, our community suffered with this hanging over their heads. So let 2022 be the Christmas that they actually have without this worry of their homes being demolished in, in way for a a corridor to move our traffic around. I congratulate um, uh, you, Mr Deputy Mayor, for uh, expanding on the uh, original um, recommendation. 
uh, what this actually does is it gives confidence to our community that this council is very much uh, committed to looking at alternates and alternates that we can achieve. It's an exciting time uh, to be a, a councillor uh, on this council because uh, together and collectively we will work with the staff to ensure that that happens. So congratulations again to you. Uh, if anyone else would like to speak to this, and if not, I will give the row of reply back. Uh, yes, Councillor Interman. Uh, I would like to move an amendment and again ask the uh, mover if he would include it in there. I think it's important that... Um, I'd rather we didn't make this decision before new councillors were fully informed, but I think it's important that we do, and so therefore... Uh, Mr Deputy Mayor, would you be willing to include a fourth point that uh, councillors be briefed on these matters uh, at the earliest available opportunity? Then. Yes, Councillor um, Interman. I did have a discussion with uh, Director Bilsma uh, earlier uh, regarding the original motion that was put up, uh, and uh, we did talk about various options that might be available there. For the purpose of uh, moving forward, I'm happy to support this motion, uh, provided we've got that opportunity for councillors to have uh, a close understa closer understanding of... Um, uh, what this all means, because it is really, uh, really complicated. Uh, of course, we're quite a large population with um, with quite uh, significant traffic movement, uh, and the options uh, for uh, for new roads uh, still should continue to be on the table and considered. I understand the provisos that are put on here. Uh, nevertheless, um, I, I want uh, councillors to be briefed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Interman. Um, Madam Mayor, I, I have a question. I'm unaware of how much um, room there is for me to, to um, make a comment similar to Councillor Interman um, jumping in. I just wondered if this um, motion is going to be voted on if um, Deputy Mayor um, Adam Roberts would consider some rewording in point one. Um, so what you're actually asking for, um, Councillor Edwards, is mm -hmm. an amendment? Yes. Okay, if you'd like to put that amendment. Um, would it be okay to scroll up because this is the new one that I hadn't seen till till now, just so I could um, um, and have a look. Um, I think the, the things I think would be helpful would be to discontinue any investigations, planning and funding for new major roads. Uh, I, I get the feeling that that's kind of what it's meant to be hinting at. Um, and also I wonder about adding in, um, in terms of the uh, stakeholders being affected, that we could add in um, significant uh, existing links. Um, sorry, just a moment, I'll get the place where it should go. Um, oh, it's cut, it's, sorry, it's just, um, I need to scroll back up just so I can see um, the rest of that because it's talking about um, the corridor that would significantly and unreasonably affect homes, businesses, clubs. I'd also like to add into that line, um, unreasonably, significantly and unreasonably affect biodiversity values. Because, uh, you know, in hearing Deputy Mayor speak to this issue, he did mention, um, and I think, Madam Mayor, you may have also mentioned our um, important wildlife that was going to be significantly affected by the orbital road as proposed. Uh, thank you, Councillor Edwards. Do we have a seconder for that amendment? Yes, Councillor Shepherd. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. If you'd like to speak to that, uh, so sorry, um, Councillor Edwards. So yes. your amendment is everything else the same? Yes, that was the only point I um, had thought about the alternate wording. Um, just to be a little bit more wider. I mean, it's certainly much improved on the um, the more narrow original um, uh, motion. 
Okay, thank you. If you'd like to speak to that. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, the orbital road. Um, yes, definitely something we've all um, been hearing about and looking into for some years now. Um, it, I think I made it clear I um, couldn't support the orbital road in its um, proposed form for social and environmental impacts and I think that um, this new motion hints at allowing us to um, to start again, to look for something better, um, but to still consider how this connects with all other current plans and, and um, finances already invested in improving our road network options. Okay, thank you, okay. thank you, Councillor Edwards. A uh, question from Councillor Interman. Uh, yes, could we... Uh I'm having trouble uh, understanding exactly what the change to Clause 1 is and whether it's significant and I suppose I'm looking to ask uh, the Dep Mr Deputy Mayor if he would include these changes. So what are the significant changes that are in here in Clause 1? Councillor Edwards, is that question directed to Councillor Edwards? Yes, thank you Madam Mayor, I'll direct it to Councillor Edwards. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Interman, uh, I thought the definition of um, of new major roads was important uh, because in that corridor, um, of course, uh, you know, I, I don't think it would be wise to rule out um, any any you know potential small road improvements or or the like, um, of which uh, we can't necessarily know, um, and the other. Uh, addition was to acknowledge the biodiversity values, um, which I think um, deserve some consideration, as do homes, businesses, clubs, landowners. Does that answer your question, Councillor Interman? Uh, thank you, Councillor Edwards. Okay, thank you. Councillor Shepherd, would you like to speak to this? And so this is speaking to whether the amendment becomes it's, the motion? Yes, speaking to the amendment, that's correct. Yeah. So if, uh, if the amendment became the motion, I do feel that that uh, amendment um, has potential harm minimisation value for, for the longer term strategic considerations. Um, and, so, and so I think that's worth um, considering. Okay, thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Uh, any further, Councillor Interman? Uh, question, uh, please, uh, to um, probably to the general manager and then to Director Watkins, perhaps uh, Director Bilsma. Uh, biodiversity uh, is something that we need to consider anyway. Is that is that not correct? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, yes, it is certainly a consideration for us anyway. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Interman. Any further discussion on this, Councillors? I'll speak in favour of the amendment uh, for the moment. Um, I understand uh, where Councillor Edwards is coming from in endeavouring to... Uh, uh, to specify here about major roads and biodiversity and so I'll support it for the moment uh, and speaking in favour of it now uh, but um, I can anticipate uh, that I will uh, be voting in favour of Mr Deputy Mayor's motion ultimately. Uh, thank you, Councillor Interman. Uh, I will put the motion to the vote then if there's no further discussion. Amendment. Oh, sorry, the amendment, thank you. Bronwyn, thank you. Councillor Edwards. Um, sorry, Madam Mayor, I was deep in thought. Could you please repeat? Um, we're currently uh, voting on my amendment. That's right. So you're for or against your amendment? For amendment. Thank you. Councillor Griffiths. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Interman. For. Thank you. Councillor Lipovac. For. Councillor Maltman. Against. <coughs> Thank you. I'm against. Mr Deputy Mayor. Against. Councillor Shepherd. For. 
Thank you. And Councillor Slade. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the amendment's been lost. We're back to the motion. Is there any further discussion before Mr Deputy Mayor wraps things up? Councillor Griffiths. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, quickly speak to this. Um, what I wanted to point out essentially is currently our issue is on a state government road. The RMS through the state government is, has actually undertaken community consultation. That started from King Creek right through to Lake Road, I believe. And so there has been a lot of information and detail gathered. There's also draft plans being undertaken. So um, there is progress on our current issue. So we actually have the opportunity to actually link in, tie in, investigate further how we can actually coordinate that interaction and improve our future plans. Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. Mr Deputy Mayor, if you'd like to uh, wrap things up, thank you. May I speak against Madam Mayor, Councillor Shepherd here? You may speak against. Thank you. So firstly, I do just want to note that um, from you know, speaking at length with various people who are being impacted by the Orbital Road Corridor being there, that uh, it, it seems that quite significant mistakes have been made historically previously that haven't taken into, ac into proper account um, that, that triple bottom line of the social impacts, the environmental impacts, as well as the economic impacts. Um, and my concern is that, or one of my concerns is that the action that we're proposing now doesn't necessarily rectify that for the future whatsoever. It doesn't prevent, it doesn't, what I should say by that is absolutely it would take this uh, cloud from over the head of those people who, who are currently being impacted, theoretically, and I'd like to, you know, uh, speak to that in a moment too or maybe ask a question. Um, but, it, you, you know, theoretically it takes that cloud uh, from above their head. However, it doesn't, it doesn't ensure that uh, these sorts of situations arise again into the future. And now that we're in the situation of uh, considerable traffic problems and a strategic business case is underway to see, about, uh, to see the validity of this pathway to resolve those traffic congestion problems as a part of a bigger picture, uh, that and four hundred and twenty thousand dollars so far, as my understanding of ratepayers' money, is, has been invested into that strategic business case, uh, uh, with with um, more money to come, regardless of whether this motion is passed. Is my understanding. So, um, apart from the perspective of requiring um, that the full information to to make a good decision on this particular issue. My concern is that it doesn't it doesn't um, achieve what I believe it's intended to achieve um, into the future. Uh, it's probably not the time for me to ask a question, is it, um, Mayor Pinson? That, that's correct. It's not the time. Okay. So my, my understanding is that uh, if future councils were to find themselves in a in great difficulty with craft with um, traffic congestion, that uh, it is. It is entirely possible that uh, they could uh, pass a new resolution that allows for um, that allows for uh, the work that that we don't want to be done. I believe, you know, uh, Deputy Mayor Roberts uh, is intending to take that cloud over people's heads, uh, and I'm not sure that that uh, this will be achieved if future motions met, resolutions mean that council can resolve to deal with traffic issues that have arisen. Um, through uh, through new resolutions. And the other concern is, of course, whether this council resolution is binding to other stakeholders. And my understanding is that uh, it is not. <laughs> that, you know, as uh, Councillor Griffiths noted, that uh, RMS or um, the ones that I've been looking at is potentially uh, Transport for New South Wales, uh, if they see strategic priority on the roads that they're managing, um, they uh, and I believe they've not been consulted on this motion yet. Um, that they they may proceed in any case. So I don't think this achieves what we would really wanted to achieve for those residents who have had that cloud over their heads for a period of time. So um, at this stage, I don't feel I can support this uh, notice of motion from a, a governance perspective of having the appropriate uh, background and information. Um, but also from the perspective of whether it really achieves what um, what it's intended to achieve. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Is there any further opposition from any councillors before Mr Deputy Mayor has his right of reply? Uh, yes, Councillor Lippervac here, which was, I guess, what I was trying to get to earlier in terms of I admire what uh, the Deputy Mayor is trying to do here, but I just feel we don't have any other options at this stage. It was Council that recognised we had an infrastructure gap in their 2013 analysis, the Economic Development Steering Group. They identified we had a missing link between Ocean Drive and the Oxley Highway. Um, now, this link is we're no longer keen to pursue, that's okay, but I, I need to see some alternatives before we shut down uh, the corridor altogether that at least provides us with an option. Now, as a former Green Meadows resident and now a resident of Innes Lake, I fully understand the anxiety and the uncertainty surrounding the Orbital Road Corridor, but it, it's a massive issue for the future of the Hastings community. We can't just push it aside after a few days into a new term without further debate and discussion. Um, we're still trying to wrap our heads around our new roles, the five councillors, not including Councillor Roberts, and having uh, not started the induction process, I resolve we we seek those new road link alternatives and options and defer this decision until the, uh, the February meeting. Thank you, Councillor Lipovac. Mr Deputy Mayor, would you like to have your right of reply? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I appreciate the patience of everybody. Uh, firstly, I just want to um, congratulate the Mayor for bringing such a meaty issue to an extraordinary meeting. Um, but that also shows that the Mayor is well across this issue, um, but I also want to note that the Mayor's been working on this issue for a number of years. There's also potentially thousands of people that will hear the outcome of this meeting, and there's a couple of messages that I think this motion puts forward, is that Council is making a very strong and strategic move here. We're taking the cloud away from the, uh, the, the residents that are affected by this particular corridor. We're taking that, that cloud away. Uh, we're certainly saying in a very... Uh, open, honest and transparent way that we do have, as item three suggests, plenty of options, plenty of roads that we will be looking at and prioritising and uh, at the will of this council delivering on in this term. But the orbital road has always been a pie in the sky project without funding, without political support. And it is so unfair to have this still on the table for one minute longer. And that's why I encourage councillors to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Mayor. Uh, I will now put the motion to the vote. Councillor Edwards, for or against the motion? Uh, abstain. Thank you. Councillor Griffiths? For. Thank you. Councillor Interman? Uh, for. Thank you. Councillor Lipovac? I'm hesitating, but I'm, I'm for it. Thank you, Councillor Lippervac. Councillor Maltman? I'm for, Madam Mayor. I am for. Mr Deputy Mayor? For, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Shepherd? Against. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Slade? For, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Councillors. Uh, the motion has now been moved. We will now move into confidential matters, which are items 10.01 and 10.02. Do I have a mover and a seconder to move into confidential? Thank you, Mr Deputy Mayor, and seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Um, is there any uh, opposition to this? I hear none. I'll declare that carried. And do I have a mover and seconder that council meeting is closed to the public for the consideration of the confidential items for the reasons as listed in the report? Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. And thank you, Councillor Maltman. Any opposition to this, councillors? I hear none. So I will declare that carried as well. So um, for everyone who's uh, been with us this afternoon on this live stream, it will cease while the confidential matters are considered by council. If you wish to wait, the live stream will resume after the closed session um, and you can hear the outcomes of the confidential items. And for those of you who elect to leave this live stream now, please enjoy the rest of your afternoon and thank you so much for being part of the democracy in the Port Macquarie Hastings region.
and to be told if we're going back in. Thank you, Michael. And for those of you who have uh, come back or waited for us to come back, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, through our uh, Madam Chief Executive Officer, I'll now ask that the Group Manager of Governance read the meeting outcomes of items in the closed session of the Extraordinary Council meeting items 10.01, 10.02, including the resolution, any conflicts of interest and voting outcomes. So, um, Michael, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, with regard to item 10.01, Notice of Motion, Proposed Road Closure, Park Pacific Drive, north of Home Street, Port Macquarie, Council resolved as follows. One, that Council 1 note the intent of councillors to provide members of the public with clarity and transparency about what transpired regarding Council's dealings with Pacific Drive matter in question. Two, authorises immediately the disclosure of all information relied upon by councillors, including the report and minutes with respect to the discussion at or business of item 15.02 of the ordinary meeting of council held 15 March 2017 concerning the subject of proposed road closure part Pacific Drive north of Home Street, Port Macquarie. Three, request the Chief Executive Officer provide councillors with a briefing on this matter. That item was carried unanimously. With regard to item 10.02, Expression of interest 21-05, Flood Recovery Works, Civil Construction. Council resolved as follows. One, that Council, in accordance with section 169.4a of the Local Government General Regulation 2021, list the following applicants as a recognised contractor on the approved procurement list for Flood Recovery Works, Civil Construction, until 30 December, 31 December, sorry, 2024. Eight, can Civil Engineering Proprietary Limited, as billed Proprietary Limited, uh, Burnett Civil Proprietary Limited, Coffs Harbour City Council Trading as Coastal Works, Ditchfield Contracting Proprietary Limited, DSA Contracting Proprietary Limited, Durac Civil Proprietary Limited, Earth Tech Proprietary Limited, Air Constructions Proprietary Limited, Engineering and Civil Con Contractors Proprietary Limited, Forte Group Proprietary Limited, GC Civil Contracting Proprietary Limited, Gleason Civil Engineering Proprietary Limited, uh, GPM Marine Constructions Proprietary Limited, Keegan Civil Proprietary Limited, Pro Proprietary Limited, Local Land Services Trading as Soil Conservation Services, Magnum Haulage and Excavations Proprietary Limited, Pan Civil Proprietary Limited, Piling and Concreting Australia PCA Proprietary Limited, PJ Warner Australia Proprietary Limited Trading as Warner Company, Ricks Asset Management or Asset Maintenance Proprietary Limited, Stable Corp Proprietary Limited. Simul Infrastructure Proprietary Limited and Triple X Dirt Works Proprietary Limited trading as MC Dirt Works. And two, maintain the confidentiality of the documents and consideration in respect of expression of interest, expression of interest 21-15. Uh, Mayor Pinson declared a pecuniary interest and removed herself from the meeting and took no part in the voting or discussion in this matter. The item was carried by the remaining councillors in the meeting. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. That now concludes uh, the business on today's agenda. Thank you again for being with us. If you are still here, I now declare the extraordinary council meeting closed at 2.14pm uh, and I wish you all a very good afternoon. Thank you very much. Are we out?